Listening. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon to everybody, and thanks for joining our Great Garment Graphics webinar, CAD Cut Q&A, your heat transfer film questions answered. Uh, today, we have an uh, expert panel on with us. Uh, we have a few uh, Group Stall Sales Alliance representatives that represent products for uh, Stalls ID Direct, including CAD Cut Direct, Transfer Express, and also Imprintables Warehouse. Uh, we also have uh, myself on today for CAD Cut Direct. I'm Josh Ellsworth. I'll be your host. And uh, today, it's all about your questions. And so just a, a little housekeeping, if you look in the GoToWebinar uh, flyout screen, which is probably on the right-hand side of your uh, PC or Mac. You can simply open that panel and you'll see a question box where you can type in and submit your questions and they'll come direct um, into my screen and we'll announce them on air and uh, bring them up to the panel. So we have a, a few polls and a few things we'd like to do before we get started, but in order to get the uh, questions rolling, Hopefully you've come with a, with a couple things you just have to have answers to today or things you've always wanted to know about. Uh, if you want tips on different things, please spend some time now um, as we're doing introductions to jot down those questions, type them into the screen, and click Submit. Uh, if we don't get to them right away, we will get to them at the end of the presentation. And if we're just overloaded with questions, we'll make sure we answer them uh, in the blog post on greatgarmentgraphics.com, which will follow the presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, each member of our panel and have them explain a little bit about themselves and uh, what they do for Group Stall. And we'll start with the first uh, guy on the top left there, which is John Louts. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing great. Um, my name is John Louts. I work for Group Stalls. I cover Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. Um, I represent TED companies, including Transfer Express, um, Stalls, as well as Imprintables. Um, one of my expertise or something that I really like to climb into is, of course, digital, digital transfers um, done with the solvent-based printers and stuff like that. Very fluent in CAD cut material and our new materials, and I think, uh, I think we've got a lot of great stuff out there. So uh, feel free to ask any questions, and we'll go from there. Excellent. Thanks, John. And we also have Mark Schwab on today. Mark? I've been knocked off, if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. I yes. lost the connection there. I, I won't be able to see the screen. Um, again, my name is Mark Schwab. Thank you, Josh. I cover the state of Florida. I've come to the industry with 26 years of uh, garment decorating, almost entirely spent in the sporting goods industry. So decorating, naming, numbering, and so forth for the sports trade is, uh, is where I think I bring my expertise. I purchased my first cutter in and around 1993, so I've been at it for a while. I might even be dating myself a bit, but uh, in that business, it became obvious we needed a, a means of doing our own naming and numbering in-house, so we purchased a cutter very early on. I've done it all as a store and business owner. I can take questions in some regards as to uh, just the ins and outs of your daily business, if you like, and I've done screen printing, embroidery. I've done contracting out. I worked uh, closely with factories on having uniforms and that sort of thing decorated by them. Uh, tackle twill, not a big issue, but I know the subject is the ad cut. So um, ask what you like. I'll do the very best I can to answer. And uh, if not, I'll take notes and try to get back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you coming on. And uh, I, you probably mentioned it, but I was jotting down some questions. Mark represents the, uh, the lovely state of Florida. So if any of you are located in Florida, uh, he's a great resource there for you. And um, Ken Chadwick is on with us as well. Ken? We still have you, Ken? If I can, Josh, uh, Mark again, I'll interject that just prior to you coming to me, a pink screen came up on mine saying I was disconnected or knocked off of the, uh, of the webinar. So I was a little surprised to hear your voice when I asked. Okay. I'm not sure if the same may have happened to Ken or not. Okay, let me just do a quick look here at our staff view. And I'm showing we still have Ken on. Um, looks like he might be calling into the telephone line. So we'll get back um, to Ken. Just, Ken, if you can hear us, just interject when you make it back on. I know he was here right before we started the webinar. Uh, but I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls CAD Cut Direct. Uh, many of you may 
know me from the uh, YouTube tutorial videos that we do, and I work every uh, day or week with these uh, guys that are on with us today, uh, helping customers like you uh, with your questions. So without further ado, we have some questions rolling in, so let's get right to it. Uh, the first question that came in today is from Tony, and he wants to know, um, John, we'll start with you, what heat press vinyl is good for a messenger bag made from what feels like canvas. So any recommendations on stuff for bags or canvas, John? Um, we can go as far as canvas, like a, you can pretty much put anything from uh, Premium Plus, our new product. Flock will go on it very nicely, um, as well as reflective or even thermal film. Um, I would take, when applying it to a, to a to a bag like that, we want to take the maybe the temperature down or stall cells a flexible application pad to put over the top of it, maybe to protect uh, some of the ribbing zippers a little bit better, and it'll work out great. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so we kind of hopefully you guys are seeing this. I pulled up a photo that we have some photos uh, in queue ready to bring up if we need them, and you can see uh, CAD Cut Premium Plus and also Fashion Film Electric applied down to some canvas messenger bags and backpacks. Um, so the, the gamut's pretty wide open to you. Um, as John explained, it's just more about making sure you get rid of those buckles, zippers, seams that can impact your pressure to get a good uh, even application area, Tony. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, next question is from Donna. Um, and let's see. Uh, Donna asks, on the Greek webinar on Tuesday, I found out about some transfer adhesive. Do you apply to fabric, then hand cut, or can it be cut with a plotter? Uh, Mark, you want to weigh in on that? Transfer adhesive, meaning the, the material is going to be purchased um, in your market and then cut? Yeah, I believe we're looking at um, So she wants to apply an adhesive to the backside of a raw material? Yeah, I think we're talking about the thermo adhesive product that... Um, that can be uh, applied to uh, applique fabrics, I would presume. Okay. Um, then, frankly, I'm not sure if that does get plot or cut. Um, is it a tearaway? Does it come apart yeah, I mean, I, as? Yeah. Let me. Uh, I'll not, try to answer this because it's tough because there's adhesive is pretty general, and I'm not. We didn't attend the webinar, uh, the Greek webinar, to know exactly what they uh, displayed, but we do have a thermo adhesive. Um, that comes mounted to a paper backing. Um, traditionally, most people um, apply that uh, to fabric, and then they can either um, hand cut or cut it on like a flatbed cutter or a laser cutter uh, if you're cutting the fabric. Um, really, to you know, to cut the adhesive on a, a vinyl cutter wouldn't do much for you. It's more about applying it to the fabric and then cutting the the fabric that's been that's had the adhesive applied to it. So hopefully that answers your question there, Donna. Yeah, I want to add one more, Josh, let me add one more thing to that. A lot of people, they, they get this really loosely wound fabric, and they put the adhesive on it, and they try to cut. It needs to be a, a little bit tighter. If, if, it's, if it's something that's really thin, and you want to put that adhesive on it and try to cut it, it pulls and snags and does all kinds of things. So make sure if you're getting your own fabric, make sure it's a little bit tight, has a tighter weave in it. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Um, okay, I have another uh, question from Donna. She threw a couple back-to-back -back here. Uh, why are more of the fashion film vinyl showing up with the frosted carrier sheet that has little or no tack? This causes the design to need to cool before removing the carrier and really slows us when doing multicolor designs. Um, I'll address that since I uh, work a lot with the heat transfer films and uh, fashion film is actually a brand of product from us, but I think uh, Donna is referring to it in a generic way uh, as lightweight films. So we do carry in the stalls uh, lineup about, let's see, three or four different lightweight films. Um, if you're referring to the Premium Plus, it does have a frosted liner, um, which is a very low tack. Um, a lot of people are finding success with that product specifically for uh, sports numbering. And we use a low tack liner so you can weed it very quickly on lettering and numbering, especially for performance fabrics. But if you're looking some, for something with a higher tack um, and also more of a crystal clear liner than a frosted liner, you may want to try the actual fashion film product. Uh, it's about 88 microns thick, which is very thin, 
um, has a, a crystal clear liner, which is ideal for doing two color designs, and uh, it's pretty high tack and easy to work with. Okay, I got another uh, question. Go for it. Oh, let me add to that. Um, while you're at the press, as, as an employer, I like to keep my employees busy and moving. If you have a product that needs to be peeled cool, um, simply take it off after it's been pressed off to the side, begin the next shirt. When the lid is down on your press, reach over, do the following, the prior shirt. It's a fairly good flow. It's a fairly good amount of cool time for those cool release products. It becomes a little bit of a dance. You, you know, load your shirt, press down, reach over, peel off. Very little time loss. Got it. Excellent. Yeah, and Donna kind of chimed in as a follow-up that she's talking actually about fashion film and um, now the sh colors are showing up with the frosted carrier sheet. So the best thing I can tell you, um, it it's a change I'm not aware of, so uh, please, after the webinar, shoot us an email with a lot number on the inside of a roll and we'll uh, confirm that and make sure you didn't get the wrong product by accident. Apologies. Uh, next question is coming in from Kim. And Kim wants to know, I want to put a monogram in film, so a design in film, on the Woozy Wine Koozie. It's made from neoprene. Do I need a stretch film for this product? Who wants to weigh in on that? I would certainly suggest Flying stretch film and, and a rather cold uh, application since you're working with neoprene. You don't want to flatten that out underneath the press. Um, super film, perhaps? Okay. Yeah, something, uh, what I hear you saying, Mark, is something uh, low heat, uh, short dwell time. That way you're not impacting the integrity of the, the koozie itself and how it performs. But um, uh, And then I guess you just, I'm not familiar with that exact koozie, but you need to evaluate whether it flexes after it fits around the wine bottle or the, um, the pop can or whatever it may be going around. And obviously if there's flex and it's more than, let's say, 5% flex, um, you'll want to use a, a stretch product. That way you can maintain the, the design um, and how it looks. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, so keep the questions coming in, guys. I know you're listening to responses, uh, but uh, we need to keep you coming in with them. Um, we have a question here. Uh, I'm brand new to vinyl cutting. What are some good Reese's? resources, excuse me, for artwork for this process? Well, as far as artwork, Stahl does have the new cut-up CDs and cut-up um, vinyl vector art that you can purchase. Um, that's very new to Stahl's. Um, but any kind, of, any kind of vector art would work great. Um, you know, something that shows a lot of um, I like to use things that have a lot of open area, um, you know, jets or s skulls or something like that, so you get a lot of contrast between the shirt and the artwork. Okay. Any other uh, resources for art that you guys may have or see other customers using? I, I have uh, used Shutterstock on occasion. I've had an instance to need a hibiscus flower. Um, I did Google Images. Um, at that point, you'll have a, any number of choices, you know, to go further from there. Um, certainly, CadWorks Live. And John yeah, that's a good, good, yeah, good point. There's uh, there's the Stalls Cutups, which is new. So that's a, a package of clip art that has 600 unique images, uh, 1,200 unique pieces of clip art, which means. Um, Basically, we give you a three-inch version of the artwork optimized for cutting a uh, fine, detailed, heart size design. And then we also give you a 10-inch um, design that maybe has a little more of the uh, design element to it uh, that's easier to weed on a larger design. So it's optimized according to stall specs for cutting. So that's a great uh, little package. I want to say, you guys know the price off the top of your head on as it? Hi, uh, $2.99. $2.99. Okay, so $2.99 for, you know, uh, 600 unique pieces of art is about 50 cents per, per art piece, and you get in two sizes, so not bad. Um, if you want to view the designs on the Stalls Cut-Up CD to decide if we want to purchase, is a question in from um, Guy. I believe that is available on our website. If not, it 
would be available on uh, greatdanegraphics.com, which is the uh, group stall company, the newest group stall company, um, and Dane Clement that uh, designed the artwork for us. They would be on his website. Uh, but I will look into that, and we'll make sure we get them on our website, if not. Um, and then Mark mentioned CAD Works Live, which is spelled C-A-D-W-O-R-X live.com. Uh, that's a place that has just bundles of artwork and templates that you can use right within an online designer, and it's all free if you're a, a Stalls customer. And you can actually download a uh, cutting driver and send to your vinyl cutter right from there. Um, so I know, you know, on the sports side of things for names and numbers, um, if you're cutting your own names and numbers, um, there isn't another program I would use other than CAD Works Easy Teams, which makes it really efficient. Okay, so on to the next question. Um, speaking of names and numbers and materials for them, I've, uh, I've been using Thermofilm for quite a few years, but I'm looking to branch out into new products, looks for my customers. What three materials would you recommend trying? Uh, so three is pretty specific. Can you guys just throw out, you know, a material or two for somebody that's in sports using thermofilm, where should they go from here? Premium Plus. Ken, I'll welcome back. back. Yeah, thanks. Well, I, I didn't leave listening, just participating. I would consider using Premium Plus because of the range of temperatures that it is allowed during the application process. Be a great application at a lower temperature for performance apparel. It's also certified for nylon at a higher temperature, so it gives you tremendous versatility. That would be one. Uh, Superfilm would be another one using the CADCUT H2O technique by putting the Superfilm under um, more heat and longer dwell time. It actually melts the material into the cotton fiber and gives it a terrific hand that emulates water-based screen printing. People love that feel. Those are two I think right off the top of my head I'd pursue. What about airflow? Yeah, airflow is a nice the, product. The audience close up there. Airflow is another great opportunity, especially like on the uh, the gray or the ash T-shirts. By having the color looks like it's it's mesh cut out. That's a that's another application you see more in the sports business. Okay, so we got uh, some premium plus, super film, some stretch stuff. I mean, I know we're seeing sales skyrocket for uh, the glitter flake material, which is a really um, high density glitter. Let's see if I can quickly find a photo of it here to show you. I have uh, zoom in here. An opportunity, an opportunity to attend a very large national volleyball competition. And of course, in that sport, nearly all girls, and there are actually more numbers and player names and things showing up in bling as part of their game uniform. That, that to me, is, is new. And uh, keep an eye out for uh, more neon, two-color neon numbers. Keep an eye out for more of uh, what we term our bling product showing up as viable numbering options on game uniforms. OK, excellent. Um, great, uh, great tips there. Um, so those are just, uh, I think we covered three products am among that conversation there. So um, you can go to the CAD Cut Direct website and you get a nice little photo of uh, the various materials and can kind of see pictures of each and, and decide what you think may be a fit. But sports customers, you can you know sell more to the same customers by decorating their stretch fabrics and showing them special effects. Those would be the two probably easiest areas to move forward. Um, sticking with uh, sports for a second. Um, we have uh, Margaret asking, we do a lot of two-color jerseys for uniforms using uh, thermofilm. We have trouble with the top color staying on after several wearings and laundrings. We use four pressure, seven seconds, 330 temperature. We're not sure how they are getting laundered. Um, you guys want to take a crack? Otherwise, I can answer that. Um, In my so shop, we had success using a flexible application pad over the first layer. It tended to press a pattern, a, a checkerboard pattern, if you will. The nature of the flexible application pad is that it, it has a um, surface to it that would impress into the, the first layer. We always felt that that gave an extra area for the adhesive of the top number to bond, grab onto, if you will. Uh, 
we stopped having problems um, after using that that little extra step in between. Okay, no, that's helpful. I mean, what I was going to say is um, typically our, our two color application is you can, if you're using thermofilm, let's say uh, pre-cut numbers, you can press that bottom color down just for a couple seconds to flatten it out and get it to stay. And then really when you lay the foreground color on, it's very important that you increase the dwell time. Um, that way you reach the melting point on the bottom layer because remember, if you just run, you know, let's say seven seconds as the, uh, as the attendee uh, mentioned, if you just run seven seconds on the foreground, you're not really going to reach the melting point on the adhesive on the background because we just added double the thickness that the heat needs to penetrate through. So I might recommend on your uh, heat press the background for two seconds and on your second application, you want to go up more to like 10 seconds um, to make sure you're getting down through both layers and really melting the adhesive into the garment. Um, uh, that, uh, I had a, a question come in from Bobby that says, I missed what product and application he just gave for two color. That was for thermofilm. Tack the background color for two seconds, um, hot peel the backing if it's a CAD cut thermofilm product, and overlay the foreground color for a full 10 seconds to make sure you reach uh, the adhesive melting point on both layers. Um, Guy has a follow-up question on CAD works. Any plans to get more full color designs in CAD works for the VersaCam? And the short answer to that is yes. Um, I believe CADWorks just launched a 3.0 designer. It's in beta. Um, so you may want to, uh, to log on. It's kind of tough to find. It's not on the left side of the screen when you log on, but it's in the middle of the screen. You know, there's a button to try it now. Um, you should log into there, and there's a lot of full color stuff um, in there already. And we are working on uh, making functionality for print cut for that system. Speaking of print cut, I'll just add here, since John's kind of a, a digital expert for us, um, what are you seeing out there? Are you seeing a lot of people transitioning from vinyl cutting to print cut, or what's kind of like the digital marketplace looking like in shops? Uh, people are liking the two colors and the added effects that digital print gives. Um, it's given, you know, everybody wants more color now. Everybody wants a little more excitement in their in their products. So. A lot of people are asking for polka dots. They're asking for, you know, leopard prints and stuff like that and their numbers. Um, your logos are getting a lot more, you know, colorful and fancy. Um, people want to be noticed. So the digital market is really, really, really taking off. Um, and if you guys are not using stuff like the um, digiprints and stuff like that from stalls, um, it's something that you might want to get samples of. Um, that way you could put it on some garments, look at it, show it to your customers, and I guarantee you, you get some business out of it. Good. good. That's a, uh, a good thing. So while we're on that topic, let me just launch a quick poll and see how many of our audience today actually owns a uh, solvent uh, printer cutter or eco-solvent printer cutter. If you can just take a a second to check yes or no while this poll's in progress. And we got 63% voted, so the other folks, if you can vote, I know some of us are multitasking and just listening since there's not much of a visual, visual presentation today. 80% are in, I'll give you five seconds for the last 21%. And let's close that and let's share the results to you guys so you can see. Um, so we got 25% of the listening audience that already has uh, print cut devices, which is, um, I think, a pretty solid number. It's kind of what I would expect it. And 75% uh, that do not. Um, so if you, you kind of, uh, um, let's see. I'm just trying to read how to quit sharing the poll results here. Okay, got it. Okay, so if you... Um, if you don't have a printer cutter yet, some of the things John is uh, mentioning uh, could be a benefit to your business because there's a lot of other applications that we won't get into today other than apparel, uh, bumper stickers, wall graphics, window decals, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Uh, but more questions are rolling in, so let me uh, switch gears for a quick second. And um, I saw a question about a table cover here. Okay, here we go. Sharon asks, I love Premium Plus. Thank you. 
and recently used it on 100% polyester tablecloths. It was white on black. Now I'm second guessing myself. Do I have to worry about dye migration? Does that happen when it is washed or before? Or what should I use as the customer wanted a soft feel? And you guys want to weigh in on dye migration and what Premium Plus does or does not do and precautions with that? I wouldn't give up on the Premium Plus. Um, Josh, I think we have had discussions about the low end temp um, that you can get away with a good bond on Premium Plus being in the 290, 285 zone. Is that, is that yep, 280. Yeah, to do 280 on a dark polyester product with a white uh, uh, media. I think you can get away with uh, very low or little to dye migration. Yeah, I mean, really what you want to look at is, um, first, are you dealing with something, uh, if it's a polyester, does it have unstable dyes? And you can't simply say yes or no, uh, because it's all really dictated by that manufacturing lot of fabric. Um, so what I recommend uh, folks do is they press a small uh, circle or, or dot or something on an inconspicuous area of the item that you're decorating, uh, particularly for wearables, you could, you know, incorporate the cost of a whole jersey or garment um, into testing. Um, see if a uh, lightweight film uh, that's not designed to inhibit dye migration will work at a lower temperature. You have better odds there. And then uh, you can throw it in a dryer, um, clothes dryer, to kind of expedite the migration process as you heat up those dyes and see if it's going to come through. Um, and if it does come through, you know you can trust thermofilm. It's a low bleed heat transfer film. It uh, doesn't quite feel as soft as Premium Plus, but I think you need to, you know, look at Thermofilm. It's probably the best product for, for table covers and unstable polyesters. I think the color also has a tremendous amount to do. If you're sticking, you know, with white, you should be pretty confident that you'd be successful. If you were in the red family or black or navy, maybe not as much. Yeah, speaking of the actual substrate that they're pressing to. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know it can vary by dark colors. Red is is the absolute worst um, that I've <laughs> seen. Reds, burgundies, those sorts of shades. Um, okay, here's a question from Bobby. This is an interesting one. Um, I have someone that prints my digital prints presently, and then I heat press them. My press is a Hicks, very old, but I don't get as nice as a print as what she does. Any suggestions? I would definitely, definitely check the temperature range on your press. Um, if, if she's printing them for you and she's getting better results with them, maybe your press is a little too hot. Um, and that's where I would begin. Calibrate your press. Because you should be getting the same results that she's getting when she presses her stuff as to when you're getting when you're pressing your stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. If um if the press is, is accurate, um, Bobby followed up and said um, that he or she doesn't know how to calibrate it. So uh, at Stalls, we actually sell um, heat press temperature strips that you can order from the heat printing accessories part of the website, and you can at least check the temperature with those strips to see if it's running hot or cold or accurate. Um, I know you may not have the budget for it right now, but you also may consider a, uh, a new heat press, especially since you mentioned that your press is, uh, is pretty old. Um, other than that, there shouldn't be really anything other than time, temperature, or pressure um, affecting it. So Bobby followed up with thank you for the, the uh, test strip info, so it should be good to go. Okay, let's see. Can you cut sign vinyl with an eyeline cutter, Kim asks. Uh, is that an eyeline 100 or 300? Uh, Kim, can you follow up with that? And John, maybe give us the answer for both. Um, you can cut signed vinyl with both. Um, of course, with a 100 or roll feed cutter, it's going to cut a little better than uh, if you're cutting it on an eye line. Um, but then again, or on a 300, you could still cut it on a 300. Um, but when you go to pull the backing off the, the signed vinyl and back off the carrier, you've got to make sure you don't cut it too deep. But it, you are capable of doing it on both cutters. Yeah, she does that. She said um, she, it is an old, old applique cutter flatbed, so it must be one of the older Eyeline 300 models. Um, yeah, it, 
it's definitely doable. You just want to make sure you don't cut through that back carrier. Okay, great. All right, so another question. Uh, Mark, let's direct this one to you. What is the best vinyl for mesh football jerseys? Uh, in a contact and pull sport like, like football, I've never found anything better than thermofilm. Um, you kind of print, or it kind of was out there, the thermofilm still just a dynamic product for bond. Uh, football, you can start getting into a little bit more of the nylons, uh, and you start approaching into the game uniforms. They're more durable, so the manufacturers might choose to use a little bit more nylon. In which case, you got to take a look at thermo grip. Um, in football, you just have uh, more room for the, 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 some of the heavier products, but you're going to need the good bond. You're going to need to fill, generally speaking, fill the holes of the mesh jerseys. Um, so thermo thermofilm, thermo grip. Um, from there, if you if you happen to be lucky enough to be using a closed mesh. Um, style football jersey, maybe it's flag football or something else like that, you might be able to back off and go into Premium Plus. Keep it soft, keep it flexible. Okay, thanks. And um, with that, any uh, recommendations on jersey suppliers? Jersey suppliers, uh, having been a manufacturer's rep in the athletic soft goods side, I would point uh, folks on, on this webinar towards uh, perhaps Game Gear division of cobblestones. That one is in Salt Lake City, Utah, so game year. Uh, they have a variety of uh, stock and full custom ability. So if you do have a school that happens to have a color combo like, say, maroon and gold that you can never find on the open market, they have the ability to cut and sew it. Um, you have Martin Sports. Uh, they're in uh, New Jersey. They are entirely stock. Um, I say entirely. They do have the ability to have their uh, Pakistani factory cut and sew uh, something custom, but for the most part, I think they're looked on as being stocks. If you need good low pricing, quick delivery on the standardized uh, colors, athletic colors, Martin Sports is probably a good option. I rep them both. <laughs> um, I don't anymore, so I'm not touting them, but uh, <laughs> two good places to start. Um, one that comes to mind that is in my state and um, has been cutting and sewing for a while, they may even be making some products from for some larger brands as Universal Athletics. So most okay. of those can be Google. Okay, and I will yeah, add to the. Good. Yeah, I'm sorry. The a lot of the um, the suppliers are done on a regional basis. So um, you know, if you're in um, Utah, you have Game Gear. If you're in New York State, you have Don Allison. Uh, the major suppliers, if you have a bricks and mortar store. It would be Russell Athletic, Rawlings, Wilson. Uh, those are the bigger names, but generally speaking, those are for uh, stocking dealers. If you just if you don't have a storefront, then you need to order from distributors. Okay, great. Yeah, I will add to the Game Gear comment. Um, I, I order a lot of stuff there for like samples for um, customer visits and shows, etc. The one thing I like about Game Gear is that they seem to use a lot of nylon fabrics, uh, specifically in their compression wear and team uniforms. And so um, for anybody that knows anything about dye migration, which we discussed earlier, um, if you're decorating a nylon instead of the polyester, it eliminates the risk. So you may want to you know, use Game Gear and pay a little more for your red garments and nylon, knowing that you're not going to have the uh, unstable dyes in that fabric. That's very uh, true across the board in football. The nylon uniform will hold up better. It's typically going to be sewn with nylon thread in the stitching, and uh, you'll just get better performance all around. Okay. Yeah, people typically shy away because, you know, the, the, the product they're using to decorate, whether it's screen printing or whatever, they don't want to print it. But with heat transfer films, just get, you know, one with a nylon adhesive, and it's as easy as pressing a, a polyester. Um, okay, here's a question. I think uh, Ken may be best suited here, or you can uh, tell me otherwise. How does flock compare in cost to embroidery, um, specifically when setting up to do a 12-piece a, a you know, left chest order? Um, how do you work in flock versus direct embroidery? Well, with direct embroidery, you'd have the setup cost of the digitizing for the design. Uh, with flock, you're going to get the raised texture that people like. Generally speaking, you're going to do it on a heavier material, 
the embroidery would probably be too heavy for a basic t-shirt where a flock would be okay. On a sweatshirt, they would run similar. But inside the sweatshirt with embroidery, you'd have the feeling of the, the backing and the backside of the thread where the flock is only going to be flat on the surface of the garment. So there's not going to be anything underneath to, um, for you to feel it. Uh, in terms of cost, if you've got your own vinyl cutter or if you give the artwork to stall to, for us to cut it, your price is going to be determined by the square inch and the quantity. Embroidery is typically sold uh, just for easy math as a dollar per thousand stitches. So if you're dealing with uh, you know, a four inch by four inch logo with embroidery, it may be eight dollars to 8,000 stitches to put that on, plus the cost of the digitized design, where the flock would have a square inch uh, charge. So for a 12-piece order, uh, my guess is the flock would be substantially cheaper. The only difference is flock would be on layers to do multiple colors, where you know the embroidery you're not really charging by the color; you're charging by the stitch. If so for like a that. yeah, it does for like a one-color design. Um, you know, flock would be definitely a a really good fit once you get into, you know, let's say three plus colors, then direct embroidery may start to pull it a little more even. Right, right. Okay, makes sense. Um, okay, a follow up question to, to that is uh, I want to use flock, but never had any luck cutting it. What should I be doing with my cutter to cut this stuff? Have a flock blade. Okay. Typically, people want to use the same blade to do everything, and on some of the thicker materials, you need to have a different blade. And the same thing is true with reflective material. Many of our customers designate a blade for reflective material. They don't go back and forth. They designate a blade because the reflective material has glass beads in it, actually, which cuts down the life of the blade. So you want to designate a blade, whether you're using flock or quill or, or a thicker material, designate a blade for that purpose and make sure it's not the same blade you're doing for your normal films. They don't need to have the same blade. Okay, great. And then I'll add to that, when you change that angle of a blade, you also need to change the offset typically on your vinyl cutter to accommodate for that varying angle of blade. That way you get accurate corners and, and detail especially. Um, okay, I'm just trying to sort through the questions here. Here's a, another one. This was back when there was a questions about suppliers for uniforms. Bobby asked, do you know of a supplier for Western shirts? I'm not sure we'll have that expertise, but I'll throw it out there. Anybody know a supplier for Western shirts? Um, cust customers, feel free to type your response in as well if you can help us out on that one. That sounds like an, an answer for Ask Phil and Stitch Magazine. Okay. They have a, a monthly column where they answer questions for suppliers, but usually if you Google uh, Western wear, you can get a, a shirt, a button-down, button-up shirt with a collar with, you know, embroidery in the collars in the back and so forth that people want to stitch for, like, square dancing and events and so forth. That would be my guess, but that's from New England. <laughs> well, Bobby apparently knows Phil and said, I forgot about Phil, thanks, so you answered that question. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, so um, back on the, the changing of blades, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, Myra asks, what type of blade for reflective material? Where can we get more information about the different blades? Uh, you can go to the accessory page in, in, on stalls on our website, and they'll have a listing of the different blades with the various costs. When people start out, they have a tendency to get the least expensive blades, like everybody. Budget's important when you start. And as they become more experienced and more profitable, they find that the more expensive blades, like anything else, you kind of get what you pay for. And so, therefore, they, they last longer and they, they stay sharper longer. They're made out of a different material. I believe it's carbon-based as opposed to steel-based. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, they're rolling in now. You guys are, are, are trying to get in your questions at the last minute. We got technically another uh, 10 minutes. We'll probably stay on a little longer than that, but uh, since questions are rolling in. Um, Bill asks, how do you change the offset on the GX24? Uh, what is the purpose of the offset? And do any of you guys happen to have a GX24 in front of you? If not, I'll walk through the best I can remember. Um, let me see. I can. I should be able to walk through it. Hold on one second. All right. We'll give John some time to prep to answer that question. In the meantime, um, 
I'll ask Harold's question to uh, Mark or Ken. Just join, I'm getting distortions on the letters when cutting with my vinyl cutter. It wants to wrinkle when it cuts. Thank you. Um, wrinkle, uh, meaning, meaning it's cutting almost like uh, perforations or maybe the material is rolling, um, maybe creating a wave ahead of the, the blade. I'd have to kind of throw that one back. I, um, wrinkling is well, not something I've experienced. Uh, we didn't have a company just, uh... Okay, I'm uh, getting some feedback from one of you guys, um, but I'll, I'll, I can kind of answer that question and just trying to guess what what wrinkling means. Uh, maybe if the material is jamming up in the cutter, uh, could be the blade extension. Almost every shop I visit has their blade extended way too far for the films that they're cutting. Um, the blade should only be extended the thickness of the film that you're cutting, since you only want to kiss cut through the. Uh, the polyurethane or PVC layer of the film and not through the backing. So if you hold your driver's license or credit card up to that blade, it should be sticking out no more than a half a credit card's thickness, and in much cases, uh, much less, unless you're cutting something very thick, like flock or twill or something of that nature. So try backing off on your blade, and um, hopefully that will help you, Harold. Um, John? Okay. On the Roland GX24, basically, you just hit menu, and then you're going to hit the down arrow or the up arrow until you get to uh, I just had it two seconds ago. Condition? Uh, yep, condition. And then you're going to go down a couple to offset. And then you'll go into offset and you'll be able to change it. And I believe for a 45 degree blade, it should be at 0.25. Correct. And at a 60 degree blade, it should be at 0.50. Correct. Yeah, I, I can't remember if it was 0.40 or 0.50 from memory, but the best thing to do is if you go into YouTube and type in like uh, setting offset on a vinyl cutter, you'll come up with a tutorial video that we did where we show you the extreme on offset and doing something really at the wrong offset versus uh, doing test cuts to dial in the offset, you should get a pretty good understanding of what offset is, how it affects uh, corners and, and circles, and how they connect, and getting accurate cuts, better cuts with your cutter. Uh, Myra said I pronounced her name very good, so we're in good shape there. Um, go back okay, to the let's... wrinkling for a second. Yeah, go for it. The uh, you know some of the simple things that uh, Josh mentioned about the blade. Uh, when you're relatively new, that's usually the first thing that you see is that the blade is way uh, extends way too long. Uh, as you mentioned, you need to have it much thinner, just scoring the, the material. The other is that may, many people have the roll too taut as it goes through. You need to have a little slack. And then you have to make sure your material is between the pinch rollers and that it tracks smoothly. And sometimes people have problems with static electricity, sometimes in the winter, in the colder states, and what happens is it wrinkles from the static, it, it sticks, if you will, and so some people put a dryer sheet, like bounce or whatever people use in their dryer to soften the clothes there, and that seems to take away the static electricity, depending upon the time of year that you're having a problem. Excellent. Very good tips. Thank you. Um, okay, so here's uh, one that's kind of time sensitive. Um, Getting ready to plan uh, to go on site and print at some all-star uh, Little League tournaments. What do you recommend showing and selling? How can I make it run as smooth as possible? Any experience with on-site printing, guys, that you can lend? Yep. <laughs> okay, go for it. And anybody else want to answer? I mean, I'm happy to do it. A lot of people would use uh, use transfers ahead of time, and if they're they're cutting. They'd have the logo ahead of time and have at least a couple made so they're not, you know, when you're cutting on demand, uh, it's much easier to do the transfers if you know roughly how many people are there, and then you can use your vinyl cutter just to do the, the names. But a lot of people would use transfers or else they'd have, a, they'd have the logo ahead of time, have some cut and weeded ahead of time so they can keep up with the demand. And price properly is the biggest issue I see is people charge too little. It's personaliza personalization and it's on demand. It's premium money. Okay, 
Excellent. Any other tips, Mark? I know you said you worked with some folks that did different tournaments for volleyball. Yeah, I'll chime in on that because I've been some standing in some of those lines on occasion. Um, transfers on hand if you're doing multicolor work is essential um, so that you can keep that flow going. Um, I have witnessed the vendors uh, taking orders and having people come back for their shirts. If you can keep them from standing over your shoulder, let them go away, let them watch the game and come back for their shirt, so have some sort of uh, tracking method so that that shirt gets done properly after they've walked away, have them folded and ready for pickup when they come back. Um, nothing more troubling than having somebody stand over your shoulder, breathing down your neck when there's another 20 people in line. They'll be more inclined to make changes um, than if they have walked away. Um, when you're cutting, let's say, a listing of names and you've got a strip of uh, area off to the side, maybe you have a 20-inch wide roll and you're only utilizing the, uh, let's just say, the left 15 inches, throw some extra logos on that open area. Um, let's just stick with the volleyball. Start cutting volleyballs at random. Uh, make them available for quick weeding on the next person that walks up and wants a volleyball, say, on the sleeve. It's already done. Um, Certainly go there with preset templates and maybe a, um, a board uh, hanging with uh, choices, you know, choice one, choice two, and make them obviously uh, something you can rapidly click on. And the other thing I found, uh, one of my larger customers in the volleyball market, certainly limiting the colors. Uh, people will take what's available there uh, for speed when there's a line. Um, offer five colors, offer seven colors, whatever your tolerance is. But again. Um, it's got to flow quickly. I've seen people walking out of line. I've seen people telling their children, we're not going to wait for this. Keep it moving. Keep it flowing. Make sure you've got enough presses to keep it going as well. Yeah, I think from what I take from that, you know, from you guys' experiences, is, is keep it simple. And when Mark and Ken talk about transfers, they're talking about something that's already pre-done. It can either be cut and weeded ahead of time, ready to apply, but, but typically the most cost-effective way is to you know have screen printed transfers on hand from like Transfer Express. Um, you know if you're doing an event, let's say it's a volleyball event, you could have this abstract volleyball design with the volleyball in it, out of goof-proof transfers in white that can press to any color garment in a matter of four seconds, and then you can cut you know the personalization element out of CAD cut, whether it be glitter flake or reflective or whatever. You can just cut a simple text drop, you know, with a team name or a uh, you know a last name, whatever the, the customization element may be, keep it simple, easy to weed, and quick turn uh, with little choices. Um, okay, so let's see. This is an, a good question. Is there any place where I can find info about pricing the vinyl? When we do work for clients, uh, don't overcharge clients. Um, so Myra wants to know about pricing uh, decorated shirts, I guess, out of this process. We actually have, uh, some of us over the years have had a little um, spreadsheet where you would plug in the product that you're using, say it's Thermofilm or Premium Plus or whatever, the unit cost, the yardage cost, then you'd have your um, the size of your graphic. You would then plug in the price of your garment, put in your markup, put in your labor, and it would spit out a price for you. I think that's I'm gonna, readily available, but it is. And uh, for those who have stuck with us uh, on the presentation today, I'm going to ask you if you'll just type into the question box the primary brand of heat transfer film that you use um, in your shop. What I'll do is I'll take the latest version of the cost calculator that um, I have, and I'll get the list from Great Garment Graphics. And assuming you signed up with your email address, I'll drop you an email with the cost calculator in it. Um, hopefully for your brand of film. So just take a moment to type in your core brand of film, and I'll uh, send it out for you. Okay. It's a great um, or, tool. Okay. Um, excellent. Yeah, it makes it quick and easy. you got to have a way to do pricing accurately. All right. I'm going to um, start to, to wrap this thing up here as you guys are typing in your responses. I want to ask uh, the panel and, and kind of go around the horn on this one as the last question. Um, and this is my question. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give the attendees today to grow sales, either with heat transfer films or printable films? What do you want to kind of cement uh, or leave with them uh, that may help them to grow sales? And I'll leave it up to you guys to, 
to respond, chime in as you you have something. I, I would say my biggest my biggest thing to grow sales is samples. Have samples. Have you know stall cells, and I carry a ton of the little mini teas with different products on it. Um, whether it's glitter flake, you you can tell people what it what it looks like. You can tell people what it feels like, but until they actually touch it or see it, they're not going to know. So have samples available. Print them. You know, print some stuff. Cut some stuff. Order a couple extra ones so you can put on shirts and hang around your shop. Um, it, if they see it. They'll like it. Okay, great. I, I agree totally. You can't sell out of an empty wagon. You, you have to have samples. Most people, as good as the Internet is, as good as webinars are and videos, many of the customers remain see, feel, touch type people, and many of those customers are yours as well. So the more things that you can have for them to see, feel, touch, compare, contrast the films, the colors, uh, the thickness, the hand of the product, um, it, it, it's, it's very important. And from your viewpoint, you need to not to be afraid to experiment. If 100% of your business is thermofilm, you're missing a lot of business because you're, you're either tentative to try something different or to try a different fabric or a different film. It, expand your horizons. Don't be afraid to experiment. Let's make it a quorum. I would certainly echo the need for better displays. And in those displays, use every ounce of creative juice you have. Use every unique and unusual font. Separate yourself from your competition by your displays having letters and numbers italicized, uh, shadowed, two color, three color. Get into the bling products. Mix the blings with some of the other items. Um, Numbers are relatively unchanged, but I can tell you the market is starting to um, push dealers towards more unique and different looks. Um, numbers in, so long as they're legal, numbers in, in uh, interesting locations. But uh, mostly I would, if I were to go back into the business, I would expand the number of font choices and you have the power with your own cutter to, um, to make your fonts and your, uh, your arches and everything any way you want to. Excellent. So, yeah, if I can just add my uh, two cents. While you guys were saying samples, sample, samples, of course we have the question, do you sell a sample package? And so I've just navigated to this link on the website here where you can see for the heat transfer films, we have these uh, kits, which are now 33% off. It's a great way to uh, cut and create showroom samples out of the different categories of material. So if you're just getting started with heat transfer film, you may take a look at the top sellers kit that has a little bit of premium plus for stretch fabrics. You can make a performance wear shirt. It has thermal film that you can throw on, you know, a, a heavy duty a mesh jersey, a sport film light. It has all the top selling materials and it also has glitter flake, which is our top selling special effect. Um, likewise, there's a bling kit. If you're already doing the sports thing and you want to get more into uh, retail stuff, you can buy these little under $50 kits and uh, create, you know, dozens of samples just from the sheets in the kit. And then there's also a reflective one, which is a whole market that a lot of people are missing. Um, so I'll kind of um, end with one of my uh, uh, tips to, to help you grow sales. And that's a, a couple things with the samples is, so you have the, the visual display in store on the road. Also, um, make sure you have a, a nice quality camera and take photographs of your samples and your displays that you're creating. And go ahead and uh, share on your personal Facebook page or your, you can create a, a company uh, Facebook page and just simply make it an exercise to publish photos of jobs you produce in your shop and hand out a little business card that say become a fan of our Facebook page to, you know, for a special deal. And basically you're going to recruit the customers that may come through your shop with an ordering cycle of let's say six times a year or three times a year and you're going to be keeping content in front of them every week or every other week as you create new samples, uh, complete new jobs, and just help to stay in front of them with exactly what you can produce. Um, with that, I want to thank the panelists uh, for coming on today, John, Mark, and Ken. I want to thank Great Garment Graphics for having us, and of course all of the uh, customers that we have on today of stalls, and there's a lot of them that have uh, submitted your questions. Um, you kind of made this uh, very successful, and I think we'll do it again. Um, and I also want to call attention to the next webinar, 
which can be found on greatgarmentgraphics.com under the schedule link, which is Heat Press Helper, a beginner's guide, and that will be on uh, June 26th. Um, and it will be a webinar on demand presentation, which basically means it's going to be a video. And uh, Jody from Great uh, from Stalls ID Direct and uh, facilitate some of the webinars for Great Garment Graphics will be delivering that. Um, so thanks for joining us today. Thanks again, panelists, and have a productive afternoon and rest of the week. This ends our presentation. Thanks, Josh.